come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the world-renowned Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're heard as far away as Australia, New Zealand, England, the Russian Federation, and others. International. I would hope International Canada. International Freak Show. And probably Canada. I think we, oh, um, Steve is yeah, from Canada, yeah. right? Steve there you Kelly? go. Yeah. Steve, thanks for listening in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. You know what we do here? I'll tell you. What do we do? We watch a movie every week that's chosen round robin. So we have no idea right now what's coming up next week until somebody tells us what it is. That's right. And then we watch it. Then we sit down and then we talk about it for your listening pleasure and education. That's right. Who are these internet radio superstars? Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. Again, we're down another person. Right? I know. It is almost like it's a part time kind of group, but I've heard that. Hey, hey don't put that on okay. us. Colin, there is a I'm one so, person that is a part time. I'm sorry I wasn't here last week. I'm sorry. Um. So tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Holly. Me. What did we watch tonight? We watched No Retreat, No Surrender. And yes, I had to look at the box because I had already forgot. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I'm How serious. I just can't remember, remember the title. title. I keep forgetting it. Like even, no retreat, no retreat. Even no though they reminded us several times in this three movie. times, I counted. <laughs> no retreat, no surrender. That's, That's right. Because right. when you're fighting, I mean, you can't. Uh, what was the name of the fucking title song? Oh, I don't know. That I don't know. You, you were the one. That was it famous. didn't feel like it had a chorus. It felt like it just kept leading up to a chorus that never hit. So like I, I couldn't absorb it. But it sounded like a Kenny. It sounded like sound like Kenny Loggins. You know, okay, a little All bit. Right. It kind of. It was yeah. someone trying to. Do a Kenny uh, Loggins like a bon impression. Jovi kind of thing. Maybe. Like I feel like that's misleading though, because Kenny Loggins obviously is known for his movie themes. Like you know, yeah. he, he did fucking uh, Top Gun, Caddyshack. Like he's Footloose. Like he's known. I, for I his think movie that's what they were trying. For. That's what they were trying to do. They were no Kenny Loggins. No, okay. no Kenny Loggins. Whoever these folks were who did yeah. the song that we just watched and and looked at on the credits, it was like and uh, didn't absorb it. Yeah, no one goes alone. No, I can't remember what the fuck it was called. Uh, <laughs> what year was this movie made, Holly? Uh, nineteen eighty. Well, oh, okay, I'm sorry. It was made in nineteen eighty four. Released in nineteen eighty six. And uh, it was directed by Corey Yoon. And would we know him from anything else? Unless you're familiar with Chinese cinema, no. Okay. Really? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it stars uh, Kurt McKinney. Kurt McKinney. Kurt yeah. McKinney. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for oh, Kurt that. McKinney. Yeah, yeah, McKinney. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Kurt yeah. McKinney. Sure, yeah. I do. Yeah. Kurt McKinney yeah. was famously the star of uh, Sworn to Justice. If you uh, remember yes. Uh, yes. that film. Okay, I just looked at the back. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> you played it off well, though. You, you sounded confident. In I know, it. for like, the radio obviously. audience, they're like, yeah, well, he knows Sword fucking Sword of Justice. Justice. They never would have known, Colin. Yeah. Who else is in this movie? Well. Why did you pick can, it is the question. Just, okay, let's let's talk about that. Um, This is this is the movie that launched Jean-Claude Van Damme. Get the mm-hmm. fuck out. It is. It. This it is it. It launched him. This yeah, is because what the got, next movie was Bloodsport. This is what got him Bloodsport. Because the producers, Canon Films, producers of Bloodsport, yeah. watched No Retreat, No Surrender, and said, this man is a goddamn movie star. This was it. Well, they saw him in Breakin', you know. Break, break, <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Breakin' is what, no, no, it, I believe what you. did it for Canon. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You got to, okay, For we yeah. have covered Breakin' on this show, but mm-hmm. it was a while ago. Mm-hmm. And if you're new and joining us, uh, you should go back and listen to, we've covered both Breakin' Both, both Breakin' and yeah. Breakin' 2, Electric Boogaloo. But did we establish that Breakin' was the first feature film role for a young Jean-Claude Yes, Van we Dan. did. We did. Straight off the boat from Brussels, Belgium. The muscles, the muscles Brussels. from Brussels. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So in that movie, he plays... Uh, I think it's guy called in like crowd. No, it's, it's more specific than that. It's like guy and crowd at first dance because that's like their first breaking dancing scene yeah, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. So like he's the it's guy like in the crowd at of that Beach. one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And he's drawing a lot of attention to himself. He really so, is. Yeah, <laughs> really you can't is. miss it once you notice him. Yeah. yeah. You've never lived until you've seen Jean Claude Van Damme strut his stuff mm-hmm. as a dancer in a leotard. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, so then he ended up in uh, No Retreat, No Surrender from the film releasing company, 
Seasonal Films Corp. <laughs> sounds so fake. That sounds like a mob front if I ever heard one. I mean, and I mean, and, and it's kind of funny that there is a mob front in this movie. I feel like <laughs> they're hiding in plain sight, Holly. <laughs> they really are. Like if we talk about it, they'll never know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He plays this... Ivan. He's basically the Dolph Lundgren from Rocky right, Four. Because you got this movie. Ivan yeah. Drago. You've uh-huh. got uh, Ivan got... Krasinski. What was his name? Krasinski. 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 He crushes you. He crushes yeah. you. He has two different nicknames, though. In the movie, he's the well. In the credits, he's the White Russian, but on the DVD case, it says he's the Russian butcher, which I don't think they said that in the movie, did they? I don't remember. They, yeah, that I mean, when he's like, when he's doing his, um, I'm sorry, when like the mob guy is doing the introduction and he's bringing him out, he says lots of things about him. Mm-hmm. He may have mentioned that, but I'd honestly the remember. Russian butcher. They didn't yeah. say that when they introduced him, like at the pen, the ultimate fight at the end. They didn't say like. Oh, they didn't. No, no, I don't think so. No, oh, because he said lots of things about him at that. Because time, so when when uh. Uh, J- is Jason our main guy? Jason, yeah. When he when he says when he says Russian, Adam, he acts like it's a slur and like freaks mm. out. <laughs> Russian, and yeah. Van Damme's face like it's contorts like, <gasps> and this like you've insulted me and my family and I must crush you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Krushinsky. <laughs> there you go. We've just solved. It. I must that, crush you, yeah. Krushinsky. Well, that was totally it. Too. That was it. You yeah, know, that I'm was like, exactly it. Good. That's why I said Michaela. <laughs> Ivan Krushinsky. When we were watching, I looked at Michaela. I was like, you know, the like the brainstorming behind that is they're like, what does he do? He crushes Krushinsky. Yep. That's it. Yeah. You no, know, that was it. Had to have been. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, um, I think I may have made this observation on another mm-hmm. film that we watched, but I just want to reiterate that, uh-huh. you know, Karate Kid's a really good movie. It is. You know what, um, Holly, I, I hate to say it, but you've really uh, soured my opinion of karate movies over the course of the freak show. I'm starting to think that all of them are bad. All right. Now, let me ask you a question because I want to go back here in time because, you know, I was like, seriously, what? Are, uh, okay. Who brought... No holds barred to the free. I did. Okay. She did. Who brought Samurai Cop? I Holly did. did. Who brought uh, Sidekicks? I did. Who brought Bloodsport? I did. <laughs> that was Summer of Canon, though. I feel like people. M- <laughs> I feel like our voices are really similar, so, yeah, they're, yeah, not, yeah, so yeah. they're not sure who's <laughs> saying really? I did. Holly's just saying yeah. I did it to all. No, yeah, so no, we're no, about no. evenly split here. Yeah. Was I mean, there another like? I brought, uh, I brought Double Impact. Double Impact. And I also brought Showdown in Little Tokyo. Oh, that's and right. And I brought Miami Connection. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Okay. I bring, yeah, I bring yeah. a lot of karate movies. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm starting to think they're all bad. Like, the good ones have been, like, bleached out of my mind by the bad yeah, ones. Yeah, but because watch. the good ones all were happened in yeah. the 70s and had, like, uh, Chinese karate masters in them. Mm-hmm. And in the 90s, you brought all these guys to It was all America. kids' movies in the 90s. It was all kids' well, karate. Who's interested in karate? I mean, I guess, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. And me, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's all the ninja movies? Well, you did bring Miami, Miami Connection. Connection. I brought Miami Connection. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And we Ninja 3 has been done before, right? Oh, yeah. Ninja show? 3 was yeah. done. Yeah. Ninja 3. With and Lucinda Teenage Dickey, who was Ninja also in Ninja Breaking. Turtles. Oh, it all comes it, full circle. It all, you know, time is a flat circle, Colin. Yeah. Good grief. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, no retreat, no surrender. Uh, you yeah. said that there's a, a history to the, the this title, the line. Um, The writer of the movie, whose name escapes me at the moment, um... Obviously, we understand that he's a big Bruce Lee fan. We get that from watching it. But what you may not know is he's also a big Bruce Springsteen fan. No. And the song No Surrender. <laughs> I was at a little bit of a stroke You're fucking there. kidding me. I'm totally serious. There's a line in the song No Surrender that they say, um, no retreat, baby, no surrender. And that's so. This, this movie could have easily been called Thunder Road. It, oh yeah, it could have been. <laughs> it could have been any number of Bruce Springsteen songs. Yeah, that's just it, the one he landed it on. It was. It was called some. Oh, hold on. Let me look at it. it was Colin called, and I's theories about why it was called this were way better. Than I know. The actual I story. know. Okay. <laughs> that's why I was laughing when you guys were talking about why it was called. The original title was Ring of Truth. That's way worse. I'll Did, go with No Retreat, No Surrender. Yeah, it's a better yeah, title. Yeah, me too. Okay, so uh, had anybody here at the table seen this movie prior to tonight? No. No. All right, listener, usually <laughs> usually the, uh, the films that we watch have been vetted in some way by at least one person who brings a movie uh, to the freak show and says, I'm going to show it to everybody else to see what they think about it. So this was a blind buy. I mean, mm-hmm. every once in a while this was, happens. I do this quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I feel like Sean does it quite a bit, I like too. doing it. I yeah. think it's fun. It's, a, it's an exploration <laughs> uh-huh. of, uh, of movies that you have not seen. I have seen this 
uh, the poster art, yeah. obviously, for a, a good portion of my life, which shows um, clearly Jean Claude Van Damme with the you know the the hammer and sickle Russian flag over mm-hmm. his head, and some un you know he could look like Rocky, right? With the American flag, he's Rocky-ish him. look. Yeah, yeah, he's got a Rocky ish, look, yeah. right? Because this is the year after Rocky Five uh, took, or sorry, Rocky Four took the uh, nation by storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 1985. Here in 1986, bam, we're going to put the Russians versus the Americans in a karate movie. Sure. It's, I mean, how yeah. can you not have box you, office? You say gold? karate, but I'm not so sure what we see at the end is karate. <laughs> I mean. It, well, what like, is it if Holly, not karate? Holly hypothesized that this movie gave birth to MMA, and I think she's right about yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. There is definitely a um, there. There's some cross hedging of um, boxing and karate in this movie, and I personally think that it was the birth of MMA. Because okay, I, I think. Oh, I oh, granted, <laughs> I'm not an expert. I don't know shit about karate, but my at least based on the previous movies Holly has brought, mm-hmm. <laughs> karate tournaments don't usually happen in a boxing ring. It's usually just a matted floor. It, it, usually, I mean, I go. I guess it probably because you don't need ropes for karate. There's no need true. for that. I, I guess it probably would depend on what you have access to. The but, you, but they, like, as but, a filmmaker, or they, what are we talking? no, they, the actual event. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> takes place I on agree. a matted floor. Yeah, exactly. Yes. They don't. You don't use ropes like it's, it's fucking wrestling, like no. they do in this movie. Well, I mean, it takes place in a uh, boxing ring. Yeah, the climax. I was of like, this technically, film. it would be closer to traditional wrestling. Yeah, they just use a mat too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's. Yeah, this is like a home. This is what can we do that looks coolest? Not so much what's a real sport. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. When did, uh, so. Is, Again, MMA. Is yeah, kickboxing exactly. and MMA, these are two different things. Yeah, they're different. Saying, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. They're very different. MMA has a lot looser rules and can go for a lot longer amount of time and uh, is much more like brutal as a sport. Yeah, because it's full contact, yep. right? No yeah. gloves. It's yeah. actual fighters. Mm-hmm. And again, hitting. we full contact karate. Mm-hmm. Full contact yeah. karate. They make that note in the poster. Right. At the um, end of the movie. But yet they have, like, they're not boxing gloves, but they're like these padded things over their hands and their ankles. I think they, I th- I want to say they do actually do use pads in professional Do they? Match. I think they do. Like I said, my knowledge is mostly based on the movies you previously bought, brought. Sure. So yeah. you know, I'm just like, when are they going to chop the wood in half? And when are they? Gonna, there, are, there are people. Shit. There are people listening to this right now that are freaking the fuck out. They're like, you guys oh, know sure. nothing about this sport. Yeah. This is true. I don't claim <laughs> to know anything. So but that's, yeah. the, that's the joy of listening to this show as we discover, uh, you know, things about uh, uh, you know we're, we're mm-hmm. taking the movie at face value. Okay, basically. but when the when the Rocky knockoff guy wins the match on TV. Sure. Was that not like a boxing match? That pretty it, much looked like a it boxing did. It match. It looked very much like boxing. I thought yeah. so because it was at the MGM Grand. Yeah. And all this other stuff. Yeah. He, yeah. 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 Um, so I'm just looking at the back of this. Was released by on video by uh, Kino Studio Classics, of course. Um, it says the action. This is directed by the action great Corey. What do you how do you pronounce Yoon, that? Yoon. Yoon. Corey uh, Yoon. of the transporter. Which I'm like, he did not direct <gasps> no. the transporter. That was Louis Lasseter, L- 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 or whatever mm-hmm. did uh, the Hulk and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, and Jet Li's The Legend and The Legend Two. So I'm assuming he is a choreographer, perhaps. Mm. Oh. Yeah, or something, some sort of crewman or something. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. Um, we don't know, but we're <laughs> hypothesizing this right here now on this show. That's right. Um, okay, so the plot of this film, so No Retreat, No Surrender, mm-hmm. uh, comes from a long lineage of uh, fighting films, um, heavily inspired, of course, by Bruce Lee, who has, ironically, we have never watched a Bruce Lee movie on this no, program <laughs> to date. Well, he only has like four movies, right? We have to talk a little bit about so, Bruce Lee. Sorry, I've got he, breaking news. He did direct it with Louis Leterrier. Get the fuck yes, out he of did. here. Yeah. Wow. He's actually, Shit. he's got 32 directing credits under his name on IMDb. This and guy's where that does No Retreat, stuff. No Surrender fall in that list? It's pretty early because he directed, you guys remember that movie Dead or Alive, DOA? The, the like, beach like, ball. Yeah, he directed volleyball, that. Volleyball, uh, yeah? Yes, he did really? the video game. I thought, yeah. he, I thought he did all Chinese movies. There's a lot of those, but uh, mm. I mean, Fist of Fury. He's, he's done uh, a lot. Bruce Lee movie? Yeah. Fist of Fury? Get yeah. the fuck out. Yeah, this guy's, this guy's actually got kind of a legit career. Game of Death 2. 
two. Well, the first yeah. one was fucking terrible. Holy shit, I can't imagine. <laughs> well, that was the one. Yeah. So Game of Death was the movie that was shot prior to mm-hmm. Enter the Dragon, but was released after the fact, and they had to use a body double for Okay, so it's bad. Little, yeah, it's bad. We got to give a little bit of uh, history of Bruce Lee, and this will come into play mm-hmm. uh, later on in the, in the show. But Bruce Lee was, I mean, you know, for modern, modern audiences, you got to imagine, like, this guy was huge yeah. when he was around as uh, this new fighting style. Because I think, uh, especially in America, we were used to uh, this kind of, um, it's a studio fight style that's uh, mm-hmm. commonly seen in Westerns or Star Trek or whatever. Like all these Western guys like yeah. William Shatner, you know, would. Just like at a fist fight. It's Just, a John yeah. Wayne, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's very stagey kind mm-hmm. of thing. And very stiff. Very, Yeah. Yeah, it's not like it's very choreographed, yes. right? And then the bar fight kind of stuff. Yeah. And then uh, the stuntman fight scene. And then Bruce Lee comes on the scene and he changed the whole game mm-hmm. because he brought Eastern martial arts to the movies. And it was like revolutionary. Nobody in America had seen this before and he became this titanic, huge movie star. Yeah, like, if, since Bruce Lee, I mean, we've had, you know, like Jet Li, Jackie Chan, that kind of thing. But I don't think anyone's come close to being that big. Like being so iconic as Bruce Lee, I don't think so. I don't no, think I don't have. think so. No, because really? he was the guy who, like, you know, planted the flag. I mean, he had because when everybody saw it, they wanted to become a fighter like Bruce Lee. Yeah. He had his own uh, classes. Chuck Norris was right. a student of his uh, and was featured in Game of Death. Bruce Lee made, I think, like three films, maybe in uh, China, mm-hmm. and that before he came here. He made, um, there's Fist of Fury and the Chinese mm-hmm. Connection and the, what, they're all retitled. So I'm thinking like mm-hmm. the big boss and uh-huh. I can't remember. Um, he only made one actual uh, American studio movie and that was Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon, yeah. Yeah. And he was on the TV show Kung Fu for a little bit mm-hmm. and he was on uh, the Green Hornet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he he had filmed part of Game of Death and then he died. Mm-hmm. Uh, prior to the release of Enter the Dragon. And so they put that, you know, together, uh, Game of Death, a- after the, the fact with a stand in. So his legacy, like, ends at like 1973, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it casts a very long shadow. And yeah. so in this film, and so I don't know, maybe we'll come back to Bruce Lee, but it's important. <laughs> so remember, Bruce Lee is a huge icon of uh, fight cinema. So enter, uh, no retreat, no surrender. That's right. Is a film about a kid named Jason from the small town of Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? He his, uh, his dad owns a dojo in Los Angeles that he's that w- when we when we start the movie that he is training with his dad in class at his dad's dojo. And class is interrupted by some sleazy New York hooligans. Right. Yeah. So the mob Comes into the dojo. Yeah. And what do they want to do, Holly? What's the, what's the, because this is establishing for your film. Yeah. Right, right at the beginning. You've got your, your, your hero, your protagonist, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the villains. Yeah. And what is their goal? What's the thing that they're after in this film? They want to take the dojo. Why? Because obviously in the mob world, a dojo is a great cover for their mob activities. <laughs> Naturally. Right. Yeah, it feels like it's a monopoly situation. They just want to own all the properties they can, so they're trying to collect all the dojos they can. Yeah, but I, I'm like, I'm struggling even now to kind of grasp this. So the idea that usually, I mean, mob I, I can see in your face that you want more, but that's it. <laughs> but we're not giving any more. That's yet. it. But I don't even get it. You know, no. it's like, okay, we want something that we can launder money through, or that we can use to dispose the bodies. That's always good. That's yeah. why you get the uh, waste management. You get the waste management. Yeah. Where you get the black top business so you can like fucking bury people. Yeah. And, okay. Know. Listener, please structure. Please write in and tell us what your thoughts are. But we were theorizing when we were watching this that a dojo would kind of be a bad front for the yes. mob. They like, can't hide their money in a they dojo. They can't hide their money. They don't make that much There's money. There's no disposal situation. No. Like, what's the advantage to having a dojo it's for a front? It's literally property. Yeah. That's it. Like we were talking about, you know, you got to have something that brings in enough cash to to make the books add up. Yeah. You know? You're not getting that from... We talked about how on Breaking Bad, like, a car wash wasn't good enough for 
right. for the amount of money Walt is bringing in. Mm-hmm. Like maybe the, they, these filmmakers just didn't even think about it at all. They're like, we want to make I know, a you karate don't movie. Say. And so we just said, the mob wants their dojo. Well, of course they do. The mob wants to have Obviously. all the dojos on the East Coast. This is the New York Mafia, mind yeah. you, who wants to take over all the dojos. And the this is the a, West, no, the, the West, sorry, West Coast. West Coast. They're, they're, they want yeah. to get both coasts. But weren't they? They, yeah. they were from. They New were York. from the East yeah, Coast. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. They were, this was their. This their, was in Los Angeles. This was them planting the flag on the West Coast. This is a yeah. nefarious scheme. These guys, they want a bi-coastal mob. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's you terrible. guys are insane. I see no holes in this. <laughs> 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 Especially in the 80s when there's no internet to organize anything. Right. You know, you got to do everything through the mail, I guess. Yeah, well, or going out there yeah. in person and bringing your thugs with you. Yeah. In which case he brings, uh, the the mob guy brings his uh, champion his, fighter, yeah. his muscle. His muscle. He brings his muscle. Who's that? Obviously, it's Jean-Claude Van Damme. What? Jean-Claude Van Damme's a villain in this film? He really is. He oh, wears boy. a white suit with well, a red tie. Well, I mean, that's tie. how you know. Yeah. White, white suit, suit and red tie. Red tie because you have to know he's Russian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously. Why does the uh, Italian... Well, are they Italian? I, they said I th- that the... Uh, I th- I if they're a so. New York mob, it's probably safe it's to say they're probably, probably Italian. They're cozied up with the Russians. Sure. Okay, just go with us yes. on yep. this. Yes. All right. <laughs> Match made in heaven. It's the 80s. Anything was possible. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing that says you're more... I mean, like, that was the whole thing in the 80s, though. It was like the, the Russian, communist, yeah. the red menace. But we're bringing them into the New York mafia, which I'm sure would not stand for that at all. And we're going to take him as our muscle and through, you know, just uh, f- force... Yeah, uh, an yeah. intimidation. Europe's take over. most feared fighter. Yeah, I don't even think it's like a, it's a, it's an alliance sort of thing. I literally think this just this one individual happens to be Russian and is this guy's like mad dog, right? Like, yeah, he's like the the mountain on Game of Thrones to you know whoever right. to Joffrey, right? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's the he's the dog. They, yeah, yeah, the most feared fighter in Europe. So they just offered him a lot of money uh-huh. to come around, stand around in white suits. Yeah, okay, but this is where this movie, like, I mean, this is where. It, it kind of lives or dies, right? It's sure. like, so basically you're saying that the mafia wants to take over the dojos mm-hmm. because they have not only a financial interest, they want to make, you know, uh, right. the front companies, but because their guys are fighters mm-hmm. and they want, uh, yeah, more, I guess yeah. more like spaces for them to practice and work out I guess like who knew the mafia was so into karate I mean I didn't know until this movie showed <laughs> they, me and tonight I have you know been, the, the, they're uh, really invested right in their ways. staff they're really trying to make their staff yeah. the best they can be the thing is though like they never really do they at any point do they really say that they're going to open their own dojo no, no, they just come they, in and they threaten just, him for no they, reason. Yeah, they just come and like take the space. So we don't know for sure that they're like reopening their own dojo. It they might be fucking just, dry cleaning for they, all we know. Yeah, they may just be taking the building. That seems like more accurate mob logic. Yeah. To just be like, we want the space. Maybe they're just like, this is, this, is now pri- it's a pizzeria. this is prime property <laughs> and we want this space because we're going to make a shit ton in rent. The I don't prime know. property in the strip mall. And the- yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, because who would... I don't know anything about Los Angeles a- real estate. It yeah. could be. Or the mafia. I have no idea. I mean, what are we doing? I know a little more about the mob. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this is a, a lot of mafia terrorizing. She's like, you know, there's cousins and uncles. and You should see the pictures from my great uncle's funeral. It looks like a deleted scene from The Godfather. It's wonderful. Anyway, continue. That's fantastic. It's I'm hung up on pictures from a funeral. We take pictures at a funeral. Not at this one. They did. Yeah. Wow. All right. Wow. It was a, they right. chase it was down a, the camera guy, and they're like, "Hey, hey, hey!" It was here. a spectacle. I'll say that. Yeah. The one guy just waves the other guy and says, "Take him." Okay. That's how that just works. Right? Curious yeah. why you want to document a funeral. That's I'm hung oh, up on that. Oh, shit. Like, why do you take yeah, pictures at a funeral? Right. Yeah. 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 Good question. Yeah. Okay. Don't ask that question. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm sure sorry, I keep thinking his name's Billy. Jason's Jason. dad. Jason yeah. uh, gets his ass handed to him. Gets his leg broke. His by leg broke by the by Russian. JCVD. Yeah. Yeah. Ivan. Ivan. It's Ivan. I'm just gonna keep calling him Ivan. <laughs> well, you're saying it wrong. What are you talking about? It's I'm Ivan. saying it like the Russians say it. That's not how they say it in this movie. Okay, fine. Uh, so if Ivan, it's Yvonne, the terrible... If it's Ivan, it'd be like Y V O N N E. No, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's Ivan, the crazy Ivan. Ivan. You know, anyway, the submarine captains do. Okay, so um, I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Jason, Jason. Statham. All right. So they get kicked at much like uh, Ralph Macchio in the Karate That's Kid. That's right. Uh, they have to relocate. Mm-hmm. And they relocate to sunny Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very sunny Seattle, isn't it? Now that you say that. It didn't rain at all in this movie, did it? The Emerald City. Yeah. The Emerald City. <laughs> Right. Where I like that the movie uh, says, you know, so we see basically their cross country trip where they pass yeah. the sign that says, welcome, welcome to, to Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. They Then they show the space needle. And yep. as the camera pans down, a subtitle says Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> In case he didn't know. Yeah. This is an applause worthy moment. <laughs> I think the first bravura <laughs> moment of the film. Um, so. Do you think the Seattle Tourism Board was like, you have to put at least three identifiers in this is <laughs> Seattle? Well, I mean, why do they move to Seattle, though? Because Bruce Lee's buried there. That's, That's why. Right. That's <laughs> literally the only reason. Bruce Lee is buried there. Where we actually go to his grave at some point. I'm yes. like sitting there going like, this seems kind of morbid. But yeah. okay. You're oh, especially when he says, help me, sensei. You're the only one who can help me. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, dude, you're shouting at a grave in a graveyard. Like a real grave. A real grave, It is yeah. kind of morbid. But think of all the people that go visit like Jim Morrison's grave. You know? Yeah, like, but those people, it's like a visit thing. And yeah. pay like a respect. Thing. But yeah. to film a movie at, on somebody... This a dead guy, right? Or whatever. Yeah. Um, and yell at him. Yell at him to come help. Demand he come help yeah. you. Yeah. I got nowhere else to go. Yeah. Well, how do we get there, though? I mean, what is so wrong uh, with Jason's life? Everything. <laughs> like? Uh, his dojo is now a garage, which is fine. It works. Yeah. His training space is his garage. Uh, his, and his dad doesn't want him to fight, damn it. Uh, this is a key point uh, that yes. I think we have to drive home to Which doesn't make any sense. Home. Dad is a karate teacher and is adamantly against using karate for violence. I ask you, I am not a karate uh, you know, enthusiast. Right. But it is a fighting martial arts, a fighting style. Yes. But you're not supposed to use it. You're just, it's just a workout. You're not supposed to use it as uh, like a combative technique. It's all self-defense. Self-defense, yeah. So you cannot be the antagonist in the situation. Right. Basically. That's not, that's not what karate's guy. about. The antagonist yeah. is a bad guy. That's right. Remember that, kids. Yeah. Damn it. All you karate taking kids out there. Um, <laughs> he's, so, he's got an annoying neighbor across the street. Oh, my God. That The fucking neighbor. Um, apparently eats like cake, half a cake at a time. Just holds the yeah, plate. And- I don't, I still don't understand. I still don't understand when we first see him, he's leaning up against a car and he's eating cake. He's, but it, it looks like it's supposed to be a box of ding dongs. Well, there was a but box of ding dongs on the car and then he was holding like half a, half a round okay, cake. Okay. That's in his what hand. I was like. Okay. Does he have like a cake with a side of cake right now? I think so. Right. I, think I think it's think like, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah. I okay. got the impression, even though I didn't catch what it was, I, I saw the ding dongs. Yeah. I yeah. think there were other sweets like, okay. There yeah. The, like he's, he's got, got a got stash. Shit all smeared all over his face. It's the most blatant fat guy commentary I've ever seen in a oh, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's all of his shirts are like three sizes too small throughout this it's whole movie, un- too. And he always has shit like smeared all over, like he's been uh, feasting on every single thing that he can possibly get his yeah. hands on. Mm-hmm. It's all over his face. Mm-hmm. All over his face. And you're like, okay, so this is the weird neighbor or whatever, but yeah. he has a problem with the kid moving in across the street. That Bruce Lee freak, because yeah. Jason has a Bruce Lee uh, mm-hmm. t-shirt. t-shirt. Yes. The only thing... It, this kid's like because we're never really given his motivation for like much of anything because he also hates the the sidekick so the sidekick RJ, RJ sidekick mm-hmm. comes in and he is basically wants to be Boogaloo Shrimp from Breaking he, really he looks does. like him he plays like the same kind of role yeah he does and, it's but like okay so this, this the, is like the next he's not the next door neighbor he's down he's the, the street skateboarding breakdancing yeah kid. The, new, the new best friend yeah. Yeah. yeah he's the new best friend yep he's skateboarding he's breakdancing he just wants to hang out but like the the uh, the antagonist neighbor i don't remember what that guy's name was um he so he has a problem with rj Mm -hmm. and he has a problem with jason because he has a bruce lee shirt Mm -hmm. and we're never given any motivation for his problem is so the only thing we can come to is that he's just racist asshole like, Although the movie doesn't kind of see, that's why I wonder. Like in the eighties, was that on their mind? Like now, obviously, a modern yeah. audience kind of looks at it like I got a problem with that kid, and everybody else is like, "What's your problem with him?" Yeah, well, because he's a black kid, or is it just because 
he's a nerd and this guy's a jock. But well, he, cause this but they, guy, and they literally said, what's your problem with him? And he said, I got my reasons. Yeah. And that's all he said. Which like, we wait for a payoff yeah. where like at some point in the past, he got yeah. his science project got chosen over the Scots. Or right. what's up? Literally, literally anything. <laughs> literally give us anything. Well, give us anything is like he pushed me on the playground in mm-hmm. second grade, you know, something stupid You're, like that. You're not far off. Mm-hmm. The scene that was supposed to happen. That Wait, no, what? <laughs> the scene that was supposed to be included in the film but was never shot was a flashback of RJ accidentally tripping Scott in the cafeteria and him spilling his food. Uh, oh, and his see, food is like yes. where his is. where like yes. uh, his like his reason for living is food. His, so yeah, his comfort that's like blanket. a, a yeah. great and offense he's to him. Yes. So yeah, embarrassing his food. It's all a thing. thing. That would have yeah. been you know what. They should have kept that in. Yeah. That would have helped. Should, they could have cut a few things and added that, and yeah. it would have made a lot. They more could have sense. cut one of the like four training montages we had to watch yes. instead. You know, maybe add that, and maybe add you know an introduction to Kelly besides her birthday party. Who's yeah. Kelly? Oh boy. Okay, so this is a great. <laughs> this is a great moment. I mean, like some films like this, kind of live or die. We sat there watching. Well, to be fair, we watched an international cut of this film. We did. Apparently, there's a U.S. cut and an international cut. Yeah. Why there are two, I don't know. But we watch this movie, and at some point, like, you know, Hero moves to town, much like Daniel's son does. And uh, he has, uh, you know, he goes to the dojo, but it turns out that uh, Scott, Mm -hmm. the neighborhood antagonist, is a part of the karate team, which I find hard to believe based on his physique that he's a, you know, athletic type. You know, uh, I'll even, I'll even give credit. You know, a lot of larger people are capable of doing extraordinary things. However, his overall, I don't know, demeanor, demeanor. Thank you. That's what, that's what really strays me. He has no discipline. Because, can can we, can we recall back in the days of Chris Farley, he was quite nimble in some situations. I remember that. Patrick Swayze. Yes. Yeah. Very, yeah. One of the first scenes we see Scott in is, is he sees RJ coming down the street on a skateboard. He runs out and tackles him and just starts beating him for no fucking reason. He does. Like, yeah, that's, that's the kind of stuff that makes him look racist. (laughs) <laughs> because because there's or a bully yeah. just general yeah. bad bully mm-hmm. uh yeah. but they uh they end up uh after so there's a we sat there thinking like that there might be a real like a, you know what a film reel is right the, the, like a good 15 minutes of this movie was deleted because without seeing the key moment where uh daniel son meets mm-hmm. his love interest uh, it's just all of a sudden he's in, he's showing up at a birthday party for yeah. some girl named Kelly who we yeah. haven't mm-hmm. been introduced to. Mm-hmm. And then they're making out like it's like, OK, you're new in town and, you know, you're somehow you're yeah. making out with this girl. And it turns out that she's the girlfriend or whatever. The, the yeah, do- he's because he's, guy, he's like, obviously not making friends with the people at the dojo because, you know, Scott kind of he owns that place apparently yeah scott yeah. owns like the town apparently and he sabotages the whole situation so that he's not going to fit in at this dojo so he does not make friends there but then all of a sudden he's at this birthday party where the entire guest list is basically people from the dojo yeah so well because her brother we find right, out is the is, owner and he yes. is not only the owner of the dojo but he's also i the think karate, like karate national karate champion of seattle or the world for all i we think know. he's national I think that's because it was on TV. I think he's the national champion. Yeah. Because that was the fight at MGM. That remember? we see on television yeah. that Jason watches like, oh, man, that guy is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he's like, they go there and yeah. Jason gets, of course, in a fight, much like Danielson does. Much mm-hmm. like, yeah. Only a lot less dramatic. Where he gets his ass <laughs> handed to him at this, uh, at this party mm-hmm. because his L.A. martial arts aren't up to Seattle standards and he's already made enemies somehow inadvertently mm-hmm. with the, uh, the Seattle dojo, right. of which there's only one in which they all like <laughs> congregate here at Kelly's birthday party. Okay. There's was something we got to talk about at Kelly's birthday. Well, I mean, there was, we could spend a whole episode probably talking about Kelly's is birthday. It, is it what's in the fucking box? Yeah. What's is in the fucking box? Okay. Well, and that first of all, the eighties fashion in the scenes is oh, wild. Lord. And it's, we'll, that's right. Filmmakers, when you're making a movie about the eighties, you got to have uh pant suit or something. It looks, it's a track suit, but it looks like pajamas. Yep. Irregular necklines. No that, one, no one has a regular neckline on any show. Neckline. Shit that's Ugh. torn for no yep. good goddamn no reason. reason. Yep. And uh, a headband. 
Yeah. Yeah. Headband. Yeah, yep. Sweatband. Large mm-hmm. hair. Yep. Large hair. Yeah, you need to learn. Unflattering swimsuits. Very unflattering. Yep. Uh, so wait, was was Jason the one that had the box? Jason. Okay. Yeah. I was so distracted by the box that I forgot who carried are, it. In. Yeah. Are we gonna? Are, yeah. Are you, are you going to talk about the outside of the box yeah. before we get to the inside? Yeah. yeah. So okay. so Jason's carrying this uh, uh, wrapped gift for Kelly's birthday. Don't know who Kelly is, but the party's here according to the sign. Yeah. And he's walking up and some kid running out of the house runs into the box and knocks it out of his hands. Yep. It's karate champion. Yep. So because he, he's been summoned by the New York mafia. He's got to go yep. down to his dojo. You want to yep. keep your business? You get down here. Yep. Yeah. So he picks up this box. Uh, they go in, hands it to Kelly. We cut to a close up. While she's unwrapping it, and the wrapping paper is yellow with um, clothes hanging on like a clothesline. Yes, that's the clothes pattern. hanging on a clothesline. <laughs> that's <laughs> nice and that's the wrapping paper. It's yeah. nice and birthday. Yeah, that's themed. birthday. Yep. Clothes hanging on a clothesline. Why would Why that would be totally. unwrapping paper at all? Yeah. Why would that be unwrapping? That's paper? a chore. That's not festive. <laughs> 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 laundry. It's like, yeah. hey, do that your fucking laundry. Summer oh my God. and spring. I, you have it's... Christmas trees in the wintertime and you have clothes hanging out of line in the summer. It's not flowers. As, or as sun. soon as we finish recording this, I'm going to Google wrapping paper <laughs> with, like, with like dirty dishes on them or something. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I'm wrapping a your mop present bucket. in. A mop bucket. Yes. I'm looking yeah. for chores on wrapping paper. Yes. Um, so she's excited, close up opening the box, <laughs> lifts the lid up. There's a live rabbit inside a this live box. Live rabbit. Yeah, what? You have never. Well, I mean, I like, I've given a lot of. It was, I don't, I don't wrap rabbit. them in a box. It was wrapped yeah. in a box. <laughs> well, so you give a gift. In a cage? Yeah. <laughs> you hand a crate to them? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're doing it all wrong. He put it in a box and wrap it up it's so a good way for there's it to no die. air in there. <laughs> so it's a big surprise when the rabbit goes, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so happy to see you. So and then jump out. So and then sorry. you hope someone else knocks the box out of your hands while you're carrying it, right? Like oh, yeah. what happened in this movie? And I'm sorry, let's talk about the practicality of the whole thing now now kelly's gonna leave her goddamn birthday party and go to the pet store and buy a cage and yeah. a little like no we uh, not a wheel because it's a bunny yeah but, but like a like, little water drippy thing like, yeah <laughs> well that and like <laughs> rabbits shit like crazy like they just yeah. hop around yeah, you shitting a hutch. you gotta yeah get, you, you gotta, need a rabbit run you gotta yeah. get your like sawdust to put on the bottom yeah. of the cage like, like that thing's gonna be shitting all over the house before she even gets back right? like this is, this is right? brilliant though because i'm stealing this for whoever invites me to a birthday <laughs> yeah. party no, live just, rabbit fyi i'm gonna give you an animal that you now have to take care of and like all the attendant things that you have to purchase to this is like you know it's like here, here's like a massive thing that you have to deal with now if you want to be really mean you'll give them like a reptile because reptiles are super high maintenance oh, and really God, expensive no. to care for you give them like a lizard or a snake stop or something stop giving him like, ideas because I, I think my birthday's the next one <laughs> stop giving him ideas give, give him something that, give him something that has to live in like a temperature controlled environment yeah. you know like <laughs> oh, god it's fantastic my birthday rolls around, i'm like god damn it colin a chameleon really? you did bring no retreat no surrender to <laughs> the freak show he's gonna wrap it in clothesline paper too <laughs> if i can find it oh my oh, god oh yeah it's gonna be perfect um so the uh the birthday uh, party well, yeah, this is a birthday party. Jason gets humiliated, and then he yeah. ends up having to go home. And then his dad basically like gives him a bunch of shit because hey, the kid comes home and his clothes are torn and he's all bruised because he got beat up. And his dad's like, "Were you fighting again?" And the kid's like, "Yeah, I was fighting again." And he's like, "I told you about that fighting." And uh, Jason calls his dad a coward. Yeah, you never fight because you're a coward. Yeah. yeah, I would I would argue that kid would have gotten his ass kicked either way. Like like so. he he was the new kid in town. They were gonna kick his ass whether he was a fighter or not. So for his dad to be like karate's the problem is so wildly misdirected. Yeah, <laughs> you know, for being a former dojo teacher, he so knows say. nothing. His dad picks an odd career choice when he moves out to uh, Seattle. Yep. Yeah, he does. Yeah, from sensei to bartender, you don't see the transition there. Was he a bartender or was he a bar back? He was a bartender. Was he? Because he was like, I thought he was just like a waiter at a bar. Maybe I I was wrong. I think he's a bartender. He gets uh, accosted by the local ruffians. Everybody's a ruffian. You go to a small town. A small small town like Seattle? You go to to a new town. So quaint. uh, Everybody is against you, right? It's you against the world. And in this case, he's getting, like, the customers are pouring beer on his head. Yeah. Because it's that kind of place where like everybody's yeah. just hostile. Like, and oh, you're a new guy. I'm gonna yeah, pour it's a like beer. The, it's like the bar from No Holds Barred. It is, <laughs> and it's the fucking and the bar bully. 
Oh, which for like the, I don't know, five minutes of that whole scene, whatever. It was, I thought it was Scott because they look like the same goddamn yeah. person. Why couldn't that have been Scott's dad? I should have been. That would have been. Should have been. But it's we a actually, nice symmetry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he looks been. like the guy. It's like, this is an older version of the bully. But it would no, have been Scott's like O'Doyle dead. from fucking Billy Madison. Yeah, exactly. All the, all the bullies of the O'Doyles. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't go that no, way. It I was doesn't. I was kind of disappointed. Yeah. So, uh, Billy, I think was this the Jason? lowest? Jason. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Who's Billy? I'm gonna be stuck on this. All <laughs> he looks like a Billy. I guess. Okay. Um. So Jason, I think, uh, is this his lowest moment? He goes to Bruce Lee's grave, and yeah. he, he says, you know, basically, like you're the only one who can help me, Sensei yeah, well, Lee. Because we, first of all, I mean. He got beat up at the party, and then on his way out of the party, he fucking like pushes Kelly. Yeah, yeah he no shoves her. Yeah, for no reason. You telling me you didn't have any part of this? You didn't know that they were gonna be here and blah blah blah. And we're like, who's Kelly? Yeah, <laughs> that's us. we're like, but how do you know her? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Wait, what? Who are you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we mention that the guy who runs the dojo for the guy who owns the dojo is actually like in love with Kelly? Yeah, yeah, and is also a bully and like yeah. sure. And oh, do we leave out the part when like he goes home and his dad's like, "Oh, have you been fighting?" And then his dad's like, "Uh, does the equivalent of like flushing his drugs down the toilet by like oh he like rips, he rips his rips, posters down, he rips and... a Bruce Lee poster in half, he takes apart all of his like dojo it, equipment, yeah. and like no, dad. it's super dramatic, and yeah. that's when he runs away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he runs away to his friend RJ, knocks yeah. on his uh, fence. fence. That's what you do when you go <laughs> over your friend's house. Fence. Knock on the fence. And then RJ's like, huh, what? Oh, you're down there. Uh, and RJ's like, don't worry, man. I know I know where this abandoned house is. We can hole up in there. And so they go over there and bring all the training shit over. Mm-hmm. They got fucking candles everywhere. Like, it's dirty yeah. dancing. But... Uh, <laughs> Dude, he still goes back to his house. He's like, yeah, but I got to get home, you know, before my dad. Otherwise, we'd call the cops. And so, yeah. like, what are we doing here? So this is a training area. Yeah. He's made his new do- dojo. He's moved out of the garage and into an abandoned house. Yeah. Much like Fight Club. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah. Many parallels uh, to Fight Club. Okay, so because. Are you saying RJ is not a real person? No, I'm just saying. Oh, no, we're, about, we're about to get to the one who's not a real person. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the mental illness of our yeah. main character comes into play. Yeah. Because. Lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen. some sidekick vibes, guys. Yeah. And the reason that Holly picked the movie. Sorry. The reason that (laughs) you want to see this is because the ghost of Bruce Lee (laughs) is a major character in this motion picture. And saying ghost and Bruce Lee, there are heavy quotation marks around both of those. (laughs) The worst Bruce Lee impersonator you could ever imagine. Yeah, who I'm is sure. This guy? Th- I don't know. I'm sure there can be worse. <laughs> I I don't know. He looked nothing like Bruce Lee. He was speaking Korean and dubbed and, and dubbed with a Chinese <laughs> accent. Yeah, it's like yeah. that's c- clearly a Korean guy. Yes. Uh, have you seen the trailer for Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in America? Yeah, yes. that that guy looks way more like Bruce Lee than this I'm guy. I'm like, just give that man an Oscar right yeah, now, because yeah. he is Bruce Lee. As yeah. far as my hands are yeah. the weapons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's great. Like, I was like, holy shit, this guy nailed it in the trailer <laughs> for this movie. That was the most exciting part of the trailer, I thought, honestly. I was, I saw that and was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. 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 And I've seen, uh, there was Bruce Lee with the L.I., mm-hmm. who, yeah. you know. There was, uh, they call me Bruce. Who was that guy? Was that Bruce Lee? I, or there was a couple movies. They still call mm-hmm. me Bruce. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there was uh, uh, the guy who did the dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Mm-hmm. Jason Lee. Jason um, Lee. Yeah. yeah. But the guy in fucking uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Spot on. Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. Okay. Once so, Upon a Time in Hollywood? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. So uh, Bruce Lee appears in the movie to spout Bruce Lee-ish, Bruce Lee-in? Bruce to, Lee-lee-in. To Mr. Miyagi him. Yeah. Yeah. To train our hero, Jason, in the ways of the the ways of karate. <laughs> I, I, okay. I don't, you can't tell if I did that on purpose yeah. or if that was okay. So, <laughs> so, yeah. So there's many scenes where we basically have the philosophy of, because this is the other thing. Bruce Lee was a philosopher, a he fighting was. philosopher. He was, but I feel like okay, I'm I'm only familiar with like a handful of 
Bruce Lee's like quotes and philosophies, sure. right? Yeah. But I feel like they took them and like were jumbled them a little bit. Like they didn't feel like they, yeah, were, they were. I don't think they were direct quotes. Like when he did the like, water thing, I was like, that's not how that quote went. Like yeah. <laughs> empty the glass because it, my it to knowledge be like water is, this is what glass. it is. Yeah. 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 Oh, fight like water and sting like it, a butterfly. No, okay, no, no. He talks Ali. about be like water. You have to flow and and adapt and to things around you. It's a whole big long thing about being like water, but that's like what it. Yeah. Like it you don't constantly be ends on you, the beats of be yeah. like water, be like water is how good, yeah. you know. And this, he was like some talking about filling up cups or something. I was like, wait, that sounds like like the store store brand version of this <laughs> quote. It sounded like yeah. that mumbo jumbo, Eastern mumbo jumbo Bruce Lee stuff like, that yeah, we just got, came up with. We just got the great value version. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah. So Bruce Lee does train our young hero in the ways of from the okay, grave, yeah. yeah. So is it a ghost or just the guy's got a mental illness? Because like Fight Club, uh, eventually RJ shows up at the house and sees a Jason practicing against himself, where mm-hmm. he's yep. taking punches and taking kicks to the face. Right. I think it's a Ghost sidekick situation. I was like, I think, I think it's, it's all a sidekick situation. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's where we're going with all these movies are just yeah, exploiting, he's, he's, exploiting he's mental reading, illness. Exactly. He's reading all these all. he's reading all these books that's like the, the Bruce Lee method and all stuff. So he's getting the knowledge. Mm-hmm. It's just manifesting in a very unhealthy way. I think yes. because the scene was he was reading the Bruce Lee fighting method yes. and then he fell asleep. Yes. Yep. So he's dreaming about Bruce Lee, but then yeah. it manifested. Okay. Yeah. So Master Lee, Sansai Lee. Uh, teaches him all this stuff about karate. He has to go out and like there's so then there's a lot of you know what is expected in these films, the training montage, yes. including an incredibly uncomfortable scene where uh oh, RJ. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say which uncomfortable RJ when, scene because I can think of two. Jason is doing pu- push ups. Is he doing push-ups? I don't know what that was. It wasn't push-ups because it was like he was his he was on feet his stomach, right? No, his no, feet. He's... He was on his back. His feet were like on a ledge, and his like shoulders were on a ledge, and he was like moving his like hips up and down. It was a yeah. hip thrust. Yeah, it was it, a hip it, thrust. It, it, yeah, that's it what was. made it really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, what made it really uncomfortable? He's doing a hip thrust, and RJ is sitting on his hips. Yeah, eating very provocatively an ice I, cream bar and yeah. smiling and like smiling. RJ does. Yes. Yeah. RJ, the man never known to frown. No. And it just keeps going. <laughs> now it we know why going. he's always smiling, Colin. Yeah. How, how many thrusts do you think he gets in before we cut? It's it's probably like four. four. Oh, it's yeah. quite a few. Yeah. 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 To the tune of uh, No Way Out. No, uh, never surrender. Never we don't return. know. I don't know what that song is called, that Colin. Song is. I don't know. I thought Hold you were talking about when the... we get to the dance club with RJ. Oh, the dance club. Oh, I forgot For about no, the, the dance detour club. we take uh, no apropos of nothing. Yes. For no goddamn reason. Well, no, it's to get back with Kelly, right? That's why. Uh, sure. That's right. We got Because we have to continue that plot thread. because you have to, because uh, it, it's crucial later. <laughs> it is crucial. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you have to have a love interest, I assume. Although I these, honestly feel world. like they didn't have to get back together for it to no, still they come didn't. into play Oh, that's later. right, because she's yeah. pissed off at him. because No, he was pissed off at her because he thinks that she yeah, set him up and she was pissed party. off at him because he fucking pushed her. Right, and so they get to this dance club rj takes that seriously Jason looks like the it's the back side of the breaking club like if you told me i was the yeah. same set i was like yeah it is where you yeah. have a couple of michael jackson dancers doing some kind of michael jackson dance slash okay yeah. it's weirder kind of than that though there's a guy <laughs> laying on the ground that put the light bulb in his mouth and is doing like the worm on his back he's in the thriller jacket though the they both jacket. are yeah, yeah. yeah. matching yeah. thriller outfits yeah yeah but then light bulb RJ, in his mouth Comes yeah. and the light bulb lights up whenever I he know. does the hip thrust. Yeah. I don't. I know why. Why is this in this movie? Because <laughs> it's magic. It's what does it have to do with anything? Michael Jackson. Maybe they. I, maybe magic. they thought they had to like one up break in. They're like they didn't do anything with the light bulb. How did that yeah. guy not make it into break in? That know. guy should have just been in break in. <laughs> should have been. He should have been. They were filmed in different cities. They're in <laughs> Seattle. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so yes, uh, I'm sure this was filmed on location. Well, it was for one week. Yeah, the listener, <laughs> long you enough have to get been, the graveyard right. Yeah. Well, you've been wondering about like you know I mean as you're listening to this will uh, uh, Jason and Kelly get back together again the question we were all asking I, I know yeah, I Colin was, was asking if Billy and, and Kelly were going to get back Billy and Kelly, <laughs> so are they asking. getting back together and the answer is yes they reconcile 
at, at the, the dance. dance. Thank oh, God. Yeah. And then we also, in the, a subsequent scene, I think uh, Billy teaches his dad a less life lesson yeah. that his dad needed to learn. Yeah. Was uh, dad comes out of the bar and he's accosted by the the bar bullies. The bar bullies, yeah. In broad daylight in the parking lot. Uh, and Billy has to jump <laughs> in there yeah, and he, rescue him. We're just going I, with Billy from here on. Yeah, on. no, I'm, cool? I'm with you. Okay. I'm with you. Uh, Billy has to jump in there and help. And the idea is that dad, even though you've been teaching karate the whole time, you've your philosophy is wrong. Uh, it actually is good if you fight aggressively uh, with karate. Yeah, if someone's trying to kick your ass and you know karate, God damn it, it's okay to use it. That's right. Don't always be water. Sometimes no. you have to uh, be, be the rock. Yeah. Sometimes you have to be the Diet Coke that's all over this movie. Yeah. yeah. So together they team up to uh, beat the shit out of the bully and like, get out of here. And they all have to run out of the yeah. parking lot. So mm-hmm. uh, Billy and his dad have uh, a reconcile. Okay. It's Jason. I need to switch back because <laughs> otherwise back. you yeah. folks listening at home would be like, what the fuck? Okay. I so, just wanted you to get it out of your system. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so Jason and his dad uh, team up to fight them. So they're cool. Right yeah. now, cool. Jason yeah. and Kelly are cool. They're cool. And Jason and RJ are cool. Cool. Right. They've always been cool. And What's then, the problem? Then they see this poster on the wall. What poster? The poster advertises a martial arts showdown that is going to happen in their town. That's right. And the feared, feared the championship New York team is going to be there. The visiting team, as they're called later the visiting on. Team. That's all they're given. The visiting, visiting New York team. team. Right. Yeah. So, now let's make it a point. Okay. Tell the audience that at this point in the movie, yeah. and this is how broken this plot line is, that basically the 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 Chicago, the New York Mafia is bringing yeah. their best fighters mm-hmm. to a exhibition match. Yes. Full and contact karate. For full contact <laughs> karate. <laughs> And that was the big wording on the poster, so it's important. Because, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. So, and then uh, the <laughs> Seattle team, which consists of uh, whoever the hell the guy who owns the dojo is. Yeah. Who actually seems like it's Kelly's brother. Kelly's brother. brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kelly's uh, brother. And, and he was the guy who won the, Kelly's, he's like the champion of the the, the nation. Yeah. Right? So we've got Kelly's, Kelly's brother, Kelly's potential suitor, Gaston, if you will. Yeah. That, that fucking he's, asshole. He's the Gaston. Yeah. Right. Who beat up uh, Jason earlier at the birthday yeah. party. Yeah. Um, black guy who's actually a really good fighter. Frank. Frank. Who is the, yeah. yeah. Well, I would he's, say he's probably the, now having seen it, he's the second best fighter in the movie. Yes. He's but fun to watch. He is fun to watch. He's really fast. Well, because when fast. we're watching uh, Jason, like, do all the, like, as he's working out the whole way through the movie, because usually movies that are martial arts, athletic, you know, uh, in their nature, the actor that you hire is usually like an actual champion martial art, martial artist. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so. The idea of the movie is that they have to, they start off at nothing and they have to work themselves into the peak physical condition, which is where the actor has been all along. He right. is actually a real martial artist. Mm-hmm. Um, I never felt that at one point in this entire movie that the guy playing Jason actually knew what the fuck he was doing because he plays like, I can't make this kick and I can't, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Not, with you this. didn't even get that later on when like his Bruce Lee training was coming to a close and then he fought with his, like, he defended his dad and stuff. You didn't No, because they easily, the, the, the guy who plays Frank, this Frank character yeah. and uh, Yvonne. <laughs> Krasinski, Ivan, are ten times better than him. True. You know what I mean? It's True. like it seems like you have yeah. to. He has to be at least as good as those guys. Yeah. And I never got the f- sense, even in the fight scene that comes up where they have in the ring, that uh, he was the better match. Just through editing, they're yeah. trying to make him like, well, he's going to win. But it's like, did you feel that? Like, I mean, I thought, I thought later on, like he was better, and you know, he was. But oh, better than he had let on. Like he was, he was better. Like, oh, okay, yeah, this guy knows what he's doing. He may not be better than the other two, but yeah. I was like, oh yeah, well, this guy's at least an actual martial artist in some capacity. Yeah, because yeah. who would show up in this final match? Well, obviously Ivan. Jean Claude Van Damme returns <laughs> to the movie. I know you thought we were going to be talking about Jean Claude Van Damme a lot more than Bruce Lee, but it turns out you were incorrect because Jean Claude Van Damme has, I guess, like, does he have like? Four lines total 
in the film. If that, he doesn't really say much at all. He kind of just yells a lot during that last fight. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. He shows up. They uh, He gets into the ring and easily kicks the ass of the other two guys, the other three guys. And so, uh, but, oh, that was, it was Kelly's brother, uh-huh. right? Dojo owner is yeah. in there. And this is the big fight. And Van Damme's kicking the living shit out of him. Yeah. He's doing all those crazy roundhouse kicks with his foot. Yeah. Where he puts his foot up your nose kind of thing that Jean-Claude Van Damme does. Yeah. But then Kelly runs up there and Jean-Claude Van Damme like. Pushes Kelly. Did he push her? I thought he like had her in some kind of. Yeah, yeah he like a, grabbed her. Oh, I that's thought, right. Yeah. He like had her in like a. Yeah. And this is the moment that Jason in the crowd. That's right. He's not one of the team members. No, because like, they don't like him. Because <laughs> we were sitting there going like, so how does he figure into the climax of this movie? Right. I'm not entirely sure. He's just there as, an, as a, a spectator. Yeah. Yeah. But seeing his girlfriend's mm-hmm. honor affronted by the evil fucking red Russian. That's right. He's like, I got to get up there. And he fucking spin kicks his way. He does this sure the does. kind of way that he dismounts a car. You flip yourself over the top of the car. Yeah. You get out of the pa- you get out of the driver's side door and flip yourself over to the passenger side. Yeah, I do it all the time. There. I know, right? right. I'm going to start doing this. <laughs> I think like tomorrow. That's how I'm just going to leave the door van? open. Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to. Roll across the fucking hood because I think that's more dramatic than the way I do it now where you kind of get out and you close the door. You look at the ground and you hit the button to close it. I prefer the good. slide across the hood. Is I the like Dukes the slide. Yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah. I like the slide yeah. I like the slide better. I like the slide. Better. But that might be a little less dramatic than fucking- It the, looks cool the, if you can pull cool. it off. Yeah. yeah. You got to get it Well, you have to have one hand up in the air, I think, when you do that. Yeah. The For Dukes balance. Yeah. 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 For balance. Yeah. 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 Okay. That yeah. would probably- well, You do have to get like a bit of a running start on that, though. start. Yeah. How do you do that when you? That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. No, well, you gotta like close the door to the car, back up, yeah, back up. run, <laughs> run. Yeah, it's. I feel like the I feel like the fabrics that you're wearing have to be pretty like you, specific. Your too. car should be waxed. Yeah, recently. that's yeah. you yeah. wax your car. Yeah, you wax your I car. I mean, anybody takes whoop. care of their car. I mean, yeah, there should be no problem at all. So, um, anyway, Jason gets in the ring right. with the Russian Titan. Mm-hmm. And then he calls him a Russian to his face, <laughs> which is the like greatest. Like it's a slur, yeah. <laughs> the greatest affront to uh, Ivan. Ivan. Uh, so the question that you're probably asking yourself, listener, is how do we know from this movie that Jean-Claude Van Damme is going to be a goddamn movie star? His fight scene's pretty awesome. He does a really good job, I thought. His fights, I mean, his fights, his fighting skill is pretty great. Yeah, and he actually knocked out one of his opponents when filming this movie. Yeah, he did. Which yeah. one, Frank? Uh, Frank. Then the fight scene with Frank when Frank gets knocked out at the end, he was actually knocked out. It's crazy that that footage like was still in the movie too. Yeah, that's crazy. A couple years later, there was a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I suppose you put, you know, uh, mm-hmm. an untrained, an untested Jean-Claude Van Damme in the ring mm-hmm. with, with yeah. an actual fighter and they're fighting. Mm-hmm. He also does his sign- his would-be signature splits move on the ropes of the of the bo- of the ring. Which so that's what you're li- that, that's what you're waiting for. Yeah. Like a Jean-Claude think, Van Damme, he's got to fucking do the I think that sports. was the moment. That's yeah. when they You're were like, like Bloodsport. Just yeah. give there this man is. a fucking contract. <laughs> There's and our Bloodsport. And then in Bloodsport, he's like, guys, I can do this on chairs. I can do it on like a mountainside. You guys you remember that part trucks. he did on the mountainside? <laughs> fucking Bloodsport. Well, it is impressive <laughs> yeah. kind of trucks, watching yeah. uh, Van Damme in this scene because, I mean, obviously, you know who he became. Yeah. You know, uh, watching it is like, well, this guy actually does kind of outclass, you know, the yeah. other fighters mm-hmm. in this. Like, he's way, I just thought, like, he was way above their yes, skill level. He is. Yes. <laughs> like, wow, you, you are clearly punching above your weight class. Nobody's here in this arguing movie. with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he doesn't win, Colin. Who, Van Damme? That's right. <laughs> I know, because he's the fucking villain of the movie. He gets his ass handed to him by Kurt McKinney. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. The seven time something champion of like Salsalita. I, who cares? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the champion of who cares? Yeah, without, and I want to say that, uh, I mean, it's basically a fair fight. At no point does uh, Kurt McKinney throw fucking sand or whatever chalk. In oh, yeah. Into Bolo Young's eyes. That's no. true. Yeah. 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 
Uh, this movie could have used some Bolo Young. I would have been down for that. Hmm. Well, we had to wait. He might have been that. a better Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah honestly, <laughs> yes. Honestly, if you told me Bolo Young was playing Bruce Lee, I would have been like, let's I'd, fucking yeah. watch that movie right now. I'd that sounds I'd awesome. <laughs> Colin disagrees. Yeah, I, I can't see. I watched that guy do Was anything. Bolo Young also a Bruce Lee uh, student? No idea. I don't know. Because he's also in Enter the Dragon. Mm-hmm. Is he? Which I assume mm-hmm. that Bruce yeah. Lee just cast the movie mm-hmm. with like his students. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I always assumed he was, but I have no idea mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like I was there was something else that happened here toward the end of the film, but mm. now I am forgetting. The, what the Kenny Loggins sound like song plays <laughs> as they raise him up and as he's the as American he crowd champion, surfs. yeah, kicking the ass of the uh, the Russian. The commie Russian, right? I still would like to think that because Jason wins the final match, that he now inherited all of the taken dojos from the New York mob. Yeah, he's winning Monopoly right yeah. now, right? Like yeah, he's yeah. owning all the properties. Yeah. Wasn't weren't those the stakes? Well, I know. I think their dojo was. Were the that, stakes ever yeah. explicitly stated? I don't know. <laughs> I thought the idea was that the New York guys were going to fight the Seattle guys. For and the, the the mob boss guy, or he's the, mob, the second in command dude, like comes in and says, like you know, <clears throat> we're gonna bring this guy in, and he wins. If he wins, it's East Coast, or sorry, uh, yeah, East Coast wins. And then if you win, like you know, Seattle wins or whatever. So yeah, isn't it the dojos? I don't know. Yeah, let's go with that. That's what I. Yeah, like. I yeah. Like Holly and I were joking, but I think we were right. We were saying yeah. they're joking that they were playing for pink slips for yeah. ownership papers, yeah. but I yeah. think they're right. So now I Jason, so. having won this fight, he is owns in the, the East Coast dojos. And he, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he yeah. is the mafia kingpin. Yeah, <laughs> he's the mafia kingpin and a large business owner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a win-win to me. Which I'm sure is the plot of No Retreat, No Surrender Two. Never. Do, do you be. think that one's called No Retreat, Never Surrender? Do you think it's or never? No, never I think retreat, it's No Retreat, surrender? No Surrender too. You gotta have to look this up. I think I it believe is. That, how many? Of Wait, these there's movies a, are there? there's a sequel to this movie. Yes. Oh, you thought I was joking? Yeah, I didn't know. No, there was no, actually no, no. This a, movie was a such a hit on home video. Was this financially successful as a movie? I think it was successful on VHS. A long enough timeline? Because, because, well, I mean, like, seriously, this is a kind of, a, well, you know, it's a kind of movie that if it didn't have Jean-Claude Van Damme's name on it. Oh, yeah. Like, you would, we would not be even be talking no, about No, we wouldn't today. even be watching it, yeah. But because he was on it, like, I mean, what'd you have? You had, like, Kickboxer and Bloodsport and maybe Lionheart and No Retreat, No Surrender. So everybody went back and looked at it. 1987, No Retreat, No Surrender 2. In this sequel, an American kickboxer must go to Cambodia to rescue his Vietnamese girlfriend from Russian and Vietnamese troops. What? So it's like Rambo it's and... Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe we should do that one. Summer of sequels. Yeah, I know. Sean, Sean, Sean said he's yeah. bringing Summer of sequels. Sounds like a good one to me. So there was not a No Retreat, No Surrender 3? Oh, but there is. <laughs> there is a three. Yeah. Wow. I'm I'm floored by this information. I had no idea. <laughs> Hold on. No Retreat, No Surrender. Oh, wait. No Retreat, No Surrender 3, Blood Brothers. Oh, no. Two feuding brothers, one a policeman, the other a martial arts expert of different political views, join forces to avenge the death of their father, a retired agent killed by the mafia. So it's a good cop, bad cop situation, it basically. Is. Does Kurt McKinney return for any of this? No. Is there a No Retreat, No Surrender 4? Is that as far as we go? I think that's as far as it goes. Okay. Yeah, well, that's good. That's know. as far as it goes. And no, Kurt McKinney is not back for for any of these. Son for, of a bitch. For the sequels, it's um. I'm not watching them then. Lauren Avedon, whoever. Oh him, whoever. He Lauren. Is. Oh yes. Yeah. Whoever he is. Right. Yeah. Okay, right, then. Lauren. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, you know from yeah. the King of the Kickboxers. <laughs> <laughs> I like okay. that. There's a whole like, subgenre. I like that title. That, like that Holly title. hasn't even dipped her toe into yet oh. of martial arts films yeah, that were made you guys, directly. This is for, never going to end. Oh yeah. Oh, this is God. never going to end. Oh, Great. <laughs> All right. So we probably overstayed our. You just determined our to sour us on this whole genre, huh? <laughs> it started with Last Dragon. Remember? Yeah, I remember the Last Dragon in the glow. That was pretty good. That's, That's right. Great. Yeah, we didn't bring yeah. that one up, but. Yeah. That was my first one. I think there's probably more that we're forgetting in there. Probably. So, I've yeah. read a lot. <laughs> the um, Quest. The Quest, which is a JCVD did Bloodsport again, but in 1920s New York. 
well, called I mean, The Quest. Wouldn't you? It's the exact same movie as Bloodsport, but, but <laughs> in a different Lion era. Is it Lionheart the same? Okay, yeah. so oh uh, no, there's like if yeah. we could That's spend his, all we yeah. could spend all day on JCVD, but mm-hmm. I don't want to. Right, because you got to move on to like Don the Dragon Wilson. I mean, Obviously, you know, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I'll tell you what, listener, the show is not over. We've talked at length about this, but you want to hear what we actually thought about the movie and whether we would recommend it to you. Our final reviews, but before that, we're going to have to summon our mailman Igor, and he's going to bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. No, I got nothing. <laughs> I, was like, I got nothing. I got nothing. This movie kind of, kind of broke well, my brain you know, a little bit. I mean, he's in. He's got his gi on because Igor. Those are just his pajamas. <laughs> Well, he's always in the mood for uh, kickboxing. He's got apparently. a light bulb in his mouth. And somewhere upstairs, I thought that was his Uncle he, just, yeah. he just leaves here every fucking week, like going up there and hitting the the. What, oh, the in stick, your garage? Uh, yeah. Oh, he's got a dojo in your garage. I yeah. have no idea. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. He, oh, wow. he lives in the basement, but he does yeah. get out a little bit. Oh, good. <laughs> he's got a little tunnel that goes up to the dojo oh, that he goes in. So. I'm glad he gets out. That's good. Well, about uh, oh, so first of all, we should tell people uh, we want you to join in the Freak Show family. We want you to tell us what you thought about tonight's episode or comment on next week's episode or any episode. And you can get a hold of us on Facebook, Facebook dot com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, on Twitter at, at Saturday Freak, Freak Show. Uh, by email Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo dot com or on Instagram. At Saturday Night Free Show. <laughs> I was going to see if we could get a chorus going on that one also. Uh, Mike Camp writes in about No Retreat, No Surrender, and, see, and he says, it's not bad for when it was made, but it could be a lot worse. I mean, I think yeah. we've seen worse. I think yeah. This is like middle of the pack for what we've seen, probably. All right. I well, don't know. This this genre is so deep. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I just saw this movie for the first time last year, but it was the Riff Tracks version. Yeah, I think that's the version everyone has seen. I don't want to watch that now. Okay. I, like, I, I do love some Mystery Science Theater 3000. This so movie really is curious. prime yeah. for jokes. Yeah. I mean, we I mean, were we, basically... We were doing it the yeah. whole time. Yeah. 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 yeah, We were losing it. This yeah. should be yeah. like a bonus Saturday Night Free Show where you just hear us talking during the movie. God, yeah, we should have done we've, that. We've thought about doing that before. Yeah. Yeah. That might not be a bad idea. I know, but, but yeah. some of them you're actually wrapped with attention because it's good. Well, no, it'd have to be something specific. It'd have yeah. to be like something like this or like Miami Connection Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Something that we talk through. Uh, Jason Hall says, from what I recall, it's basically a martial arts Rocky type deal that has a fun, corny ending. I really must revisit that movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's Rocky karate kid. Yeah. You're right. It's, it's, it's everything you've seen before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Nick Siebel writes in. Okay. Now let's follow this logic. You ready for okay. this? Here we go. Wow, I'm thinking Saturday Night Freak Show is hinting at a review of Jordan Peele's Us. First, y'all review The Burning. The following week, No Retreat, No Surrender. In an alternate universe, Jason Voorhees and the Friday the 13th series doesn't exist. It's 12 Cropsy movies. Cropsy takes Manhattan, etc. Laugh out loud. In that same universe, Daniel LaRusso, Mr. Miyagi, and Johnny Lawrence don't exist. It's Jason Stilwell, the ghost of Bruce Lee, and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Mind-blowing. I would love to visit that parallel universe where it's all cropsy movies. I, I want to see what that's like, you know? Because there's no, there's no like, mask, you know? Yeah. You know, like, the Jason mask is so iconic that, like, even But he people... might have got that in a sequel. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm curious, like, but, like, I don't know. I'm Like, the Jason mask is so iconic in our culture that even people who don't watch horror movies know what it is. So I'm curious, yeah. like, what the cropsy parallel universe is like. I want to go visit it. <laughs> How did that uh, tie back to the review of us? I don't know. We're not, I, I, I we're not going to review us. I can, we're following this. I can honestly say I did not follow that one bit. Okay. No. Well, I, a lot. No, we're not. I, I re- I'm sorry, but we're not reviewing us. <laughs> I appreciate your. I appreciate your writing in, but I didn't follow that. One us bit. is not freak show material. No, so. we're not going to. We we did talk about us at length before we started recording. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, did we did see it. <laughs> yep. We're just not going to tell you what we thought of it. That's ah, right. Ah. If that's wanna, right. If you want to know, you can message us. That's, that's right. right. We will talk to you about it. We will let you know. All right. So Dom Cree writes in. He says, "All right." Question time. Yes, Tom. What happened 
to inspirational tracks like Hold On to the Vision by oh. Kevin Chalifant. That's the song. <gasps> Down here the best. Oh, he says, hot. Um, thank you. Who would you guys consider to be the king of inspirational 80s, 90s movie songs? No guessing. And you must justify your opinion. P.S. We got, are we getting closer to best of the best, right? Don't leave me hanging, you guys. Kenny Loggins. We are, we are getting close to it, best of the best. Yeah. <laughs> It's got to be Kenny Loggins, right? Really? I mean, like, yeah. I would. Uh, yeah. Here's the thing. He said inspirational, though. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Kenny. I Lo- find over the top to be inspirational as I, a movie, and its music is fantastic. Was that sure. Kenny Loggins? Yes. Was that Sammy Hagar or something? There was both. They were both over in that the top. One. Was the was I think that one was Sammy Hagar. Well, you got to go. There was a number of tracks in Over the Top. Yeah, but it's like I mean, are we talking uh, um, like Michael Sambello? Who did I mean, Maniac and what was the guy? Oh, it's what? Like he's Robert. talking about inspirational songs. Yeah, but uh, uh um, shit. Like the song Rocky. that plays over a montage, or oh, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, the, the like, Angel um, of the City yeah. from Cobra. Yes, and, yeah. Uh, or like no, that guy or, um, did. Uh, uh, was it No Way Out? No, no yeah. easy way out. Robert no Tepper. Way. Robert yeah, Tepper. He did, yeah. he did yes. Angel of the City. I Robert love Tepper. Robert Tepper. Angel of the City's a good one. Yeah. That's a good I'm, one. I, hands down, Robert Tepper. Yeah. Well, you also, I think Sam Bello did, or am I wrong? Stan Bush, right? He also did the the Touch from Transformers. Yeah. But there was a group called Lion. They did the Transformers theme song. Right. If you remember, yeah. Transformers. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they did uh, in the Wraith a song called Never oh. Surrender. Oh, my God. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Which I thought, like, you know, yeah, watching yeah, this yeah. movie, all I can hear is Never Surrender. I, mean, yeah. I need to watch I the Wraith that. again. But I think Stan Bush also did a song called Never Surrender. Mm-hmm. Not as good. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Because Mike Sambello yeah. was also like in uh, several movies, like Independence Day. I think he had a movie mm. a song, and yeah. Man, I yeah. gotta say though, there's a lot to choose from. Honestly, you can't. For me, you can't top "No Easy Way Out." Yeah, that's my favorite. There's no easy way out. There's no shortcut home. I love it. That's I love it. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Angel of the City is pretty good too. Yeah, Carl Yeah, you know what I've always. Great. You know what I like that sounds like those. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scarface. Uh, push it to the limit. Yeah. Push it to the limit. One. Yeah. That's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. Are you taking it to the limit? I think he takes it to the limit, then he pushes it to the limit. I'm not sure. In the same. In the it's lyrics. all there in the limit. Yeah. yeah. It's a story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those movies. There's, <laughs> there's pushing, there's pulling. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I hope that answered your question, Dom. About, that was a great question. Good question. By the way. <laughs> About last week's episode, The Burning. Yo, know, Jimbo Ice says uh, it's certainly pretty well known, and so soon after Slaughter High. <laughs> yeah. Regardless, the movie is pretty lousy on plot, characters, acting, etc. But that's not what we come to summer camp slashers for. And Tom Savini definitely goes hard during the raft massacre. Several severed thumbs up for that. Yeah, I agree. That that I, I like I said on that episode, I really wish this summer camp it doesn't even have to be horror, but just summer camp movies in general would come back, but especially summer camp horror movies. But I mean I feel like if summer if there were summer camp movies, it would be teen movies, and we wouldn't watch them now. Oh, Wet Hot. Wet Hot's doing really well. That had a really good re- revival, actually. That was like yeah, one of the first revivals that Netflix ever did. So. Yeah, but I mean, like, by and large, I think most summer camp movies would be geared towards younger people. Yeah, but so are slasher movies. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Just put Jason in. That's mm-hmm. all you got to do. Yep. Solve the lawsuit. Bring Jason back. Yeah, but, that's yep. right. That's why we have yeah, Friday. But 13th. she said. She said um, not necessarily even horror movies. It's like if, yeah. If it, uh, if it was, but like what hot was like not ga- gauged for teenagers. Yeah, that was for people like my age. Yeah, but there's a movie called like it's like Camp Nowhere or something. It has Camp Bill Nowhere. Paxton and Christopher like, Lloyd. Uh, is he in it? Yeah. All right. And, you're talking about two different movies. Okay. This is like a drama comedy thing from like the 90s, and it's set in a summer camp, like about the counselors, mm-hmm. and like they had been at summer camp. So there's a drama. Mm-hmm. Then you got the comedy, the wet mm-hmm. hot American summer stuff, and you got your slasher movies. Mm-hmm. So we need the sci fi summer movie? Sure, why not? Okay. But like I said in that episode, like high school is already a heightened reality. You take that to summer camp and condense it under three months, it's an even more heightened reality. So you can get away with more drama that is more ridiculous and more condensed in a shorter time frame. Why not do that's it right. more often? Mm-hmm. The Eagle Scout movie. That's what we need. Uh, Ben Abbott, 1979, says The Burning is a good choice. Probably one of the best slashers. It was banned as a video nasty in the UK when Thorn EMI released the uncut version on VHS by accident. The uncut Whoops. version on VHS is now a collector's item. It was the first movie made by Miramax and some of Tom Savini's best special effects. I love you guys. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank 
thanks. Oh, I am always nice. fascinated about the uh, censorship and uh, rating system in other countries. So keep telling us that information because I always find that really interesting. Mm-hmm. So it's fascinating that was that that cut was banned. Yeah. I, I mean, that well, movie the whole was movie, like, yeah. I mean, the, the video nasties banned like yeah. everything that we know didn't come out there until like they got it in the late eighties, right? Or later, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Robin, oh, sorry about the previous week's film, The Descent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg writes in and says, "I remember for The Descent they had screenings in actual caves." Oh, that sounds awful. That sounds really <laughs> awful. <laughs> I was just in a cave. I went to the, the cave in the mounds. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. It's, Were uh, you thinking about that movie while you're? Yeah, in I was. Yeah. I was. I was like, because there's a lot of you know, like you can't go. Was it cold? You can see. Yeah, it was about fifty, and it was like because we had a lot of snow and the snow's melting, and so it was just dripping. Right, like you're getting rained on in the fucking place. Ew. Mm-hmm. Um, sea huds. Chuds. Chris Huddleston writes in. Welcome back, sir. He says, uh, I look at Neil Marshall's career a lot like Alex Proyas's. They each started off with two good to great movies, The Crow and Dark City for Proyas, Dog Soldiers, and The Descent for Marshall, and haven't come close since. I kind of agree with that. Mm, yeah, that's a good assessment. Yeah. yeah. Especially since Marshall apparently is a TV guy mostly now. Hellboy, mm-hmm. man. He's coming back yeah. to theaters now. He's a studio guy. We we'll all sat on that episode. Uh, we're not excited for that. So. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us to the most exciting moment in Saturday Night Freak Show history. The throwdown about... Colin! Colin! What did you think of No Retreat, No Surrender? Um... Unlike Holly, a little bit of um, these martial arts movies go a long way with me because every single one of them falls into the exact same thing, which is we have to teach you the philosophy of martial arts for like a half hour through training montages, which are like watching the, you know, like Rocky doesn't do this, right? The boxing, American boxing movies don't have the philosophy of boxing. Well, maybe they do because you got it, but it's motivational in a way that somehow connects with me better. You know, Burgess Meredith is like, you got to go, Rocky. You know, all that stuff. Rocky talking to Creed and so you get, and he has that the speeches eventually in every movie. He's yeah, got we that, all love Rocky. Colin. Yeah, oh, because they're great, but <laughs> but somehow, they're a vehicle for monologues. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. those ones work. Like those yeah. work on me when I watch them. But somehow the martial arts uh, version of that doesn't like get me all riled up the same way. You know, because I think the American boxing movie is more about like we're gonna get out there and we're gonna win, right? Yeah, and, the, yeah. Where the uh, martial arts is like, you have to learn how to bend instead of break, you know, kind of thing. And like, blah, blah, blah. And you got to be, and it's like, okay, uh huh. Okay. But you're going to go out there and kick somebody's ass, right? Okay. Yeah. I got it. And then they can do it in the end. Um, this movie's cheap as hell, right? It is a cheap movie. The only reason you're watching is because it has Jean Claude Van Damme's name on it. You're going to be disappointed because uh, he's barely in it. Uh, and clearly, you know, he went on to be something else after this, but the only reason we're going back to watch it is because his name is on the, uh, the title. So it's relentlessly cheap made by filmmakers who, even though I am told that this guy made, uh, a series has a career in, uh, in Asia. And it's like, this is, uh, pretty rough for an American film. Is it, uh, funny enough so that's the thing it's like it fails as a movie like i wouldn't recommend that you watch it as like you go into it going like oh this is gonna be an awesome van damme movie like you're gonna be disappointed so would you watch it ironically uh and have fun with it if you like bad movies uh this is a pretty bad movie but it's not like it's not miami connection bad it's not Mm -hmm. samurai cop bad it's not like that awful although there are some line readings and the actors yeah. are like i don't know if they come from stage or what the fucking guy who plays uh jason's dad in the do the yeah. in the dojo he acts with his hands and he's always yeah. making every single thing i mean because yeah because he's with, hunched with the, over all the time with too. the exception of like the side characters like the the bullies and rj and um, like all of the guys that fight in this movie, they're all martial artists. They're not actors. Yeah, but the you can tell that the other folks, like with the main speaking lines, mm-hmm. are actors because they are doing things that 
a non-actor comes into a movie and is given a bunch of lines and will just sit there and kind of like say them and they're Mm -hmm. trying to be naturalistic. And I think in a movie, naturalistic acting sometimes comes off as like, well, uninteresting. Mm -hmm. You're just saying these lines. These guys are enunciating and moving their heads around and gesturing with their hands. (laughs) But they're gesturing in this very broad way that like I always associate with a stage actor, you know, because you have to perform. So the guy in the the back row can see what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I see what you're saying. The kid RJ comes over to the house, uh, the abandoned house where Jason is practicing with the ghost of Bruce Lee. And he looks in the window and he sees objectively for him, uh, Jason is shadow boxing, mm-hmm. right? But also talking to himself. Right. And so we get the reaction shot on RJ and he like makes this really broad, like, what the f you mm-hmm. know? And then he does the the what do you call it? The loop inside this yeah, the like international the- sign of you're crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know. Um and it's like, wow, you're just you're performing for the cheap seats, but the camera's like right up on yeah. you. And this is the sign, I think, of a an unskilled director. Oh, yeah. Unable to tell his performers, you know, it's like, you know, the camera's like three feet away. Uh, you don't have to perform that big. We will just see a subtle change on your face. But whatever. That makes the movie more entertaining, I suppose. Uh I don't know. I wouldn't recommend this movie. I didn't think it was funny enough. Did I have a good time watching it? It, was like, it felt like it was three fucking hours long, it to be honest long. with you. What was the running time? Uh, like, it has to be like 90 it's like minutes. It's 90. 85 minutes, what? ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And it felt like it went on forever. Um, but again, my interest in these films is may have played into it. So I'm going to say pass. No retreat. No surrender. That is a no from me. Michaela, what would you think? Uh, I mean... Like I, I come to the show with like almost zero knowledge of any karate movies whatsoever. Um, I don't have a history of watching them or knowing anything about them. So my education is solely based on whatever Holly makes me watch. <laughs> um, and I, I'm starting to see there's only one story you can tell with oh, karate yeah. movies. And you um, see the, the Asian ones. It's the same thing. It's I mean, like, I've seen like Game story. of yeah. Death, and I've seen like you know, I've seen a lot of yeah, but like those the are like classic like ones. The you know? Shaolin, the guy from the Shaolin yeah. Temple, he's trying to get these disgraced. His dojo's been taken down, and he's got to like, right. fight for the. It's right. the same thing. Yeah, there's yeah. one fucking story. Right, there's one story and it's it's it seems like it's a contest in how cheaply and low budget you can tell that same story it, it seems like a race to the bottom instead of a race to the top for whatever reason i had no idea that like when i saw the karate kid for the first time that that's like the peak of this genre like i had no idea that that's like as good as it's ever going to get probably right um this i will say this movie i do think the fights in this were choreographed better than blood sport which is weird because Bloodsport has better people in it. Colin, you're making a face. I'm sorry. But do you not remember how much you hated the fighting in Bloodsport? Yeah, you did not in, like it because fu- you couldn't even see the hits connect in Bloodsport. Well, you can see the hits connect, but it's like all so choreographed that it, at no point did I think that it, that one of these fighters didn't know what was coming next. Well, but yeah, but like at least it they faked them connecting. Whereas in Bloodsport, they didn't even do that. You know, in Bloodsport, yeah. the editing was so poor that like you they were editing around them even coming close to hitting each other. You know, it was blood sport felt unnatural. <laughs> um, Sound effects, cells or kills your move. Uh, I think the weirdness in this movie that lies in the nonsensical storytelling, the gigantic plot holes, the like, don't worry about it. It's not important is what makes it interesting. Uh, I had a lot of fun watching this, even though it is a technically terrible movie. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to these types of movies that Hallie has brought to the freak show, I didn't enjoy sidekicks. Um, This one I enjoyed a lot more. This one I might have enjoyed the most of the ones you brought so far. Mm -hmm. So for that, I'm going to recommend it. It is a (laughs) technically terrible movie, but it is a fun watch. Get together with friends. Fucking watch it. It's insane. It's not as bad as Miami Connection, which is too bad because it was so close to being as bad as Miami Mm -hmm. Connection. There was even like the the ridiculously blue filter on scenes, yes. just like Miami <laughs> connection. Sometimes it was getting there it was and very someone close. reined it in at some point, but I, I think you gotta see it to believe it just cause it's so weird. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you gotta watch it for like a listener. Tell us how he knows Kelly and how they met. Cause I, we can't figure it out. <laughs> Is so that in yeah. the U S cut. Yeah. yeah it, it might yep. be, yeah, it might be another scene like mm-hmm. with the, 
the missing cafeteria scene to explain his Scott's like anger towards RJ the whole time. Maybe they was the intent was there and they just never got to it. But they should have fucking got to they it. They reached for like the same carton of milk in the fr- in the fridge and their hands touched and that's how they met or something right? like that. Yeah. See, we see we could fill in the gaps for this movie yeah. if we really wanted to. We really could. Holly, what'd you think? Uh, so like you guys, we said earlier, like you guys, this was my first time watching this too. And when I, I saw the, I saw the, the box cover is what got my attention, obviously. And I read the premise and then I watched the trailer and I was like, the fucking ghost of Bruce Lee trains him. Like, I can't pass this up. You know, even I was like, I can't do another Van Damme movie. I can't do another martial arts movie. I've done so many. But then I saw the ghost of Bruce Lee trains him. I I, I couldn't pass it up. I and really I was couldn't. gonna pick Cyborg next week, but now we're kicking the can down the road. I mean, listening. I regret nothing. You know? <laughs> I say worth it. I say totally worth it. This movie was bonkers. It was just totally ridiculous. The there's so many plot holes. The 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 content of this movie is just everywhere. It's it's ridiculous. There's so many, there's so many like I, it's funny that he gives her a rabbit because there's so many like rabbit trails in this movie. It's just the characters don't really connect. There's just all these side stories that they try to weave together at the end, and it it's just so stupid. And the fucking did you not hear me? The ghost of Bruce Lee trains him. This is the most ridiculous premise I've ever heard of in a martial arts movie. This out of it's just. It's so ridiculous, but it's so much fun. We had a lot of fun watching this. We were laughing hysterically. Like we made fun of it the whole time because it's so stupid. It's so incredibly stupid. And, you know, I completely agree with you. Rocky movies, the Rocky movies are inspiring. You know, they're you get into it. You you, you feel it. I don't watch these movies for that kind of feeling. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be inspired by these movies. I'm going to rip them apart and laugh at them because they're ridiculous. You know, martial arts movies from the nineties, you know, all the ones that I bring, they're all ridiculous movies. They're fun to watch. And, you know, I was, I was hoping that that's how this one would be. And I think it, I think it was, um, you know, if, if martial arts movies from the nineties, the ridiculous ones that you can make fun of are not your thing, then no, you're not going to like this, but I think it's a fun watch. So I think like Michaela said, you should get together with your friends, laugh at it, rip it apart and have a good time with it. Cause that's what it's for. It's not going to be serious. It's a horrible movie. It's absolutely horrible. But I think it's enjoyable nonetheless. So I recommend it's it. It's horrible, but you'll love it. I didn't love it. I loved making fun of it. I loved laughing at it. You know, it's ridiculous. I'll be thinking about that rabbit in that box that rabbit, for so dude. long. I, I did not think she was going to pull a rabbit out of that box. <laughs> I did not think that at all. Ridiculous. I love it. Well, all right. So that's no retreat, no surrender. Next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. Sean. Sean, what are we watching next week? We're all looking at an empty chair right now. Empty chair. That's right. We had to turn the microphone on. You know what? I think Sean said we're going to start the summer of sequels early. Oh, boy. Of course. We're watching uh, The Rage, Carrie 2, I believe. The Rage, Carrie 2. What? Oh, Sean. All right. So (laughs) get, uh, yeah, let us know what you think of The Rage, Carrie 2. Tell us something about that movie let us know what you thought about this movie uh repeat real quick um on uh, facebook facebook.com slash saturday night freak show twitter at set freak show uh on uh, by email saturday night freak show at yahoo.com or instagram at saturday night freak show and oh. be sure to also give us a rating and, and also i forgot to say it. shout out to johnny new jersey who gave me a lot of notes oh, about shit. this movie you know what he may have made a comment i have to say yeah came in he, he gave me a lot of notes about this movie he's submitted several things to us like miami connection samurai cop this kind of thing is his wheelhouse um, he gave me some really great tidbits about this movie. So All thank right. you, Johnny. He did write in. He said that this movie is one of the most 80s things to have ever 80'd. It's hard to dress up as Michael Jackson or eat ice cream the same again. Very true. Very true. Although my hard to dress up like Michael Jackson probably stems from recently watching the documentary about him. Ooh. Yeah. Bad, too soon. bad too, thoughts. Too bad soon. thoughts. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, the Saturday Night Freak Show. Never to retreat, no surrender. We should probably leave you with an '80s uh, power ballad, but we're not or anthem, but we're not can going we, to. Can we buy the rights to No Easy Way Out? We can start <laughs> singing it. There's no easy way out. <laughs> There's no shortcut home. <laughs> this is the bullet to my Valentine version. All right, okay. Uh, see you later. The basement's going dark. <laughs>